Greetings and welcome to this video on race and ethnicity and popular culture. This is part of a mini lecture series on a course, Popular Culture in the U.S., taught by Lance Eaton at North Shore Community College. So in this mini lecture we're going to have a discussion about race and ethnicity and what it is and why it's in popular culture and hopefully a few examples. So the first thing we want to talk about within um, this discussion is why are we talking about this? What does this have to do with studying popular culture? Well, first, is that perceptions about these ideas, race and ethnicity, are embedded in popular culture. So much of what we learn about race and ethnicity, we learn not necessarily from first-hand knowledge, but from popular culture. And therefore, popular culture is a place to study how race and ethnicity are composed and are presented and represented in our culture. Many of us know stereotypes and associations connected to each grouping. We may reject those, we may not like those, we may have never said these kind of things, but we become aware of stereotypes and associations, negative or positive, although some would argue that any associations with a group tends to be negative because it classifies individuals based on the group. But we tend to learn about these through popular culture, that there's so many different times and so many different ways in which popular culture is communicating things around identity regarding race and ethnicity. Um, and we also know, you know, within, cu within our culture, these groups, different races, different ethnicities, um, they're established into hierarchies. Uh, to a certain degree within the larger culture. That is, certain races or certain ethnic groups are seen or given a certain amount of privilege more than other groups do. And th that's certainly problematic and challenging. And again, it's something that we come to know by the mere fact of being engaged in popular culture or from, from the ways in which popular culture communicates with us. Um, and we have to know that regardless of whether what we consciously believe or believe them or not, r regardless, that is, you may on in a very conscious way say, I don't believe that racism is correct, I don't believe that racism happens, or I don't believe that I act racist in any kind of way, or that I privilege certain ethnic groups or not. Um, we do have to understand that we're shaped by them. And there's a variety of research that reinforces this um, that I'm always happy to point to, but we are shaped in how we view different cultures. Even even when the person says, I'm colorblind, um, you know, I don't see race, I don't see ethnicity, that's actually incorrect. And there, there's ample amounts of research that shows we do, we have biases, and those biases are certainly shaped by the information we gather from popular culture. So one thing we need to discuss here is when we talk about popular culture and race and ethnicity, we have both explicit and implicit examples. That is, these ideas of race and ethnicity, there are direct narratives and examples we can look to, and there are indirect narratives. So when we talk about explicit, we're often talking about something that is overt and purposeful. Uh, the person sets out to write a story or to create uh, an advertisement that has at its core discussion around race or ethnicity or has that as the centerpiece of its discussion in some way. But when we talk about implicit, we're often dealing with something that's more subtle. It's not necessarily a direct discussion of specific races or ethnicities or we see some type of channeling of that discussion in a different environment. Um, and so it's not always as clear, at least initially, but the pop culture scholar is able to kind of draw parallels between that implicit information or that implicit um, narrative and explain how this is actually in some ways a direct discussion or, or a significant discussion around race or ethnicity. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Uh, the first one I have up there of race and ethnicity or explicit race and uh, ethnicity in popular culture is the film 2000 from 2002, Real Women Have Curves. Uh, and this is very much you know, discussing Latino or Latina, in this case, identity in American culture as, as this daughter is trying to make sense of her life and have American aspirations while coming to terms with you know, her family and her culture, her ethnicity. 
Another good example is American History X. This is a film, again, from probably 1999 or 2000, I forget. Um, and it is focused directly around race. And it's, it's a fascinating, very powerful film uh, that talks about race in some, some very interesting ways. The, the, the main characters is this, uh, this person who comes out of prison after killing three African Americans. And it looks at how his life has changed since coming back. Meanwhile, he sees his younger brother going down that same route of becoming part of a neo-Nazi group and the like. So it's a very rich discussion of race in American, in American culture. And then finally, this happened, this is a more recent example, and this is um, the, the celebrity extravaganza that happened around the basketball player Jeremy Lin. And this had so much to do with, of course, his race and ethnicity that um, traditionally you know who who are the major basketball players we don't see a lot of people um, from southeast from southeast Asia uh, as part of that and so there's a very big discussion around him as a basketball player uh, so these are explicit discussions or examples of race and ethnicity in popular culture but let's take a look at Implicit. These are ones that are not as obvious or evident, but are still having that discussion. Um, one I have, of course, is Harry Potter. Harry Potter has such rich content to farm for all sorts of popular cultural studies. Well, one is race and that whole discussion of muggles and wizards, right? The, the people that can do magic and the people that can't. Um, and that becomes a major, you know, a major piece throughout the stories increasingly that if you are you know, th this is very much of what um, Voldemort, the one who, can, you know, that, the one who, whose name should not be spoken, is very concerned with, is pure blood, the preserving the pure blood and not having mixed blood or not having muggles involved in wizardly things. That is, a di when you hear things like pure blood, you're dealing very much with race, um, because that is a his, you know, that it, that ties into the history of race and main trying to make the race pure. Another great example um, is Action Comics, or, or Superman, um, is it, as a character who is of a different, and that you could really, say, technically you could say race, but ultimately the way he plays out is, is you see it more as, eth as ethnic, um, in that he fits in, he's not seen as a stranger per se, but the ways in which he functions privately, that is as Superman, not as Car Clark Kent, um, does indicate he's trying to fit in with the with mainstream culture even though he is a he is the ultimate foreigner and then finally avatar uh, this actual space encounter with this other intelligent uh, humanoid species both similar and not similar um, and so what does that mean and so within that discussion there is a you know there is this emphasis and interest in race going on even though it's not you know, what we traditionally think of as race, it's still something in which we see that discussion happening. So, so what? You know, I've shown you a few examples, they seem interesting, but is this really relevant? Am I just making a mountain out of a molehill? Um, you know, some people will say, oh, you know, the Civil War happened years ago, we're over that. Um, you know, the, the world isn't as, there isn't as much discussion or interest in race and, race and ethnicity, we're just one melting pot. Uh, but I would argue we're still concerned, and this is still an ongoing discussion within our popular culture. These issues permeate us everywhere. And I'll give you an example. Uh, these are the 2012 highest grossing films. And if we take a look at the top highest grossing films, I think what's fascinating here is the discussion of how, you know, where we see race and ethnicity um, so prevalent within these films. We have ho The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, the first Hobbit film. That was, you know, so much of that is about race. You have the hobbits, you have the dwarfs, you have the elves, you have the, the trolls, uh, not the trolls, the, the orcs. It is, it is central to experiencing the film. Django Unchained, about a slave who ultimately seeks out revenge, um, you know, again, clearly there is a huge racial component about that. Les Miserables is about class, um, and of course class often dovetails or, or overlaps with race and ethnicity. 
Jack Reacher, some people have, um, or, or in looking at that, there is a racial component um, within, the, or, sorry, a ethnic component within the film about um, the representation and discussion of, of Russian culture. Uh, pater uh, parental guidance is definitely generational um, and again that often dovetails with ethnicity and race because those things typically happen uh, or those things are strongly related. This is 40 is another class film. Zero Dark Thirty, the, the, the film um, about the use of torture by uh, the, American, the Amer American military is definitely a film that engages in ethnicity and some would also say ethnicity slash race depending on how one perceives of um, perceives of, of, of Arabs. So you get into the guilt trip, generational, though you could also say that was ethnic because if I remember correctly that included uh, the, the relationship was uh, between a Jewish mother and son and, and that's played off a lot within the film. Um, and then you get Monsters Inc. and you know there you could say it's ethnic. It's, it's ethnic. There you could say it's also race, depending on how you view the different types of monsters or the different types of um, I think the, the different groups within the film. Uh, and playing for keeps, I'm actually not that familiar with. But that's you know if we if we take a look at that listing of films, there's definitely a lot of discussions of race going on there, as well as ethnicity, class, etc. So that's just a brief introduction to why race and ethnicity are relevant and why we'll be talking about them in popular culture. Thank you very much.